A very good morning to you. You're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's a beautiful Monday morning, the 6th of May, 2024. And now it is one that is filled with rain and thunderstorms. So please be careful if you're driving out there. Well, on today's show, we'll be looking at several hot topics as well as global stories making headlines in our national days. We'll also be taking top trending stories. Well, and then we have a lot in store for you. My name is Rome Paulson. Welcome to The Breakfast this morning. Let's take our quote of the day to set the tone, please. like the road you're walking start paving another one if you don't like the road you're walking start paving another one and that is by Dolly Parton she is an American singer songwriter recording artist and an actor and she says this morning if you don't like the road you're walking start paving another one so where are you on your journey in life if you feel like you're not getting everything that you need to well you can start making those changes so you can get to your destination, the destination that you've set for yourself. So whatever goals, dreams and aspirations that you have, well, even if they're not working the way you want it to be at the moment, there's something you can do about it. In fact, they say change is the only constant thing in life. And so you can make that change for that better tomorrow for yourself. So if you don't like the road you're walking, Start paving another one who said you can't start. Of course, it's never too late. It's never too late to um, start to achieve those things that you've set out for yourself. If you decided to, um, you know, start a new career, you can do it. If you decided to go back to school, maybe to study medicine or law or whatever it is, well, you can do that as well. If you've decided to start a new business, of course you can. So anything that you've set your heart to, just know that you can do it. And if you don't like where you are, now is the time. The time is right now, this minute, today. And because it's Mindset Monday, so we're giving you this just to um, channel you into the week. And so you have that productive mindset to say, yes, I can start paving another road for myself. I can look at my life and say, this is where I want to get to. And I start to make those changes, those positive uh, changes to make sure that my life is better in the end. All right. That's it for our quote of the day. We'll move over to some top trending stories this morning. And this first one talks about Sarah suing Sonny, um, Wiki and others over unaccounted 5.9 trillion Naira and $4.6 billion loans. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, has filed a lawsuit against Nigeria's governors and the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, Mr. Yensom Wike, over their failure to account for the 5.9 trillion naira and $4.6 billion, billion dollar loans obtained by their states and the Federal Capital Territory, and to publish copies of the loan agreements, including details and locations of the projects executed with the loans. Now, the suit followed um, the disclosure last month by Governor Ubasani of Kaduna State that the immediate past administration of Nasir El Rufai left $587 million. 85 billion naira debt and 115 contractual liabilities making it impossible for the states to pay salaries well serap is also looking or asking the courts to direct in court and compel the governors and mr wiki to invite the economic and financial crimes commission efcc and the independent corrupt practices and other related offenses commission icpc to investigate the spending of all the loans obtained to date by the estates and the fct in the suit, Serap is arguing that in court, it is in the public interest to grant the relief sought 
Nigerians have the right to see and scrutinize the loan agreements and know the details of how the domestic and external loans obtained by the governors and the FCT ministers are spent. Serap is arguing that many states and the FCT are also allegedly mismanaging public funds, which may include domestic and external loans obtained from the bilateral and multilateral institutions and agencies. According to Serap, transparency is the spending of the loans obtained by the states and the FCT is fundamental to increase accountability, prevent corruption, and build trust in a democratic institution with the ultimate aim of strengthening the rule of law. I remember when um, Sarah actually asked the um, 36 states governors and the minister of the FCT to um, provide this information. I remember we talked about this several weeks ago on the show. And, you know, there was one question, if they don't, what happens? Well, now we're seeing something that is happening. Sarah has sued them, taking them to court to, uh, you know, just ensure that they are more accountable, which I think um, is something that we definitely need in Nigeria, or something that we definitely need in, in our nation, because we want to be able to say this is what, even if we're getting loans, and we've always said this, um, that loans are not bad, as long as you are you know, appropriating those loans to good causes. So what are you using the loans you're taking for? We can't just be um, sinking ourselves into debt and then, you know, we're, there's nothing to show for it. There's no infrastructure. There's no quality education. There's no, um, you know, good standard living for Nigerians. Everybody is crying at you know where we are at at the moment because obviously um there's poverty we're being impoverished we're not making so much money um fx rate is going up again food prices um goods and services are you know skyrocketing so there's just a lot that's happening in nigeria and so we need to know what you're using these monies for if you're taking loans it definitely should not be about you buying 160 million naira suvs it definitely should not be about you splurging you know public funds for your own personal benefits it should be something that is appropriated for the good and betterment of nigerians so I love the fact that Sarah is taking this a bit more seriously and, you know, taking them to court, asking them to provide this information. Because what we need is accountability. What we need is transparency. We need the governors and the FCT minister to, you know, be transparent. And they should have to have that accountability and say, yes, this is what we're using the money for. That money, that money is given to them is not just for their own benefit, but it is, you know, for the good of Nigeria. It is for the things that we need, the infrastructure, the quality education, the good health care. Um, those are the things those monies should be appropriated into, not just um, us not knowing what it is used for, because we can't even say they're using it for their own personal benefit, but we need to know where that money is being channeled into. So kudos to Sarah, and I really, really hope that um, the Nigerian governors and the FCT minister takes this you know, a bit more seriously and just come out. I mean, if there's no skeleton in your cupboard, what are you scared of? You might as well just show all of us and say this is what it is. And that way we can build trust again. We can, you know, build trust between the Nigerian governors, the politicians and the people and say, yes, we know what you're doing with it. So kudos to Sarah on this. I hope that um, the, the state governors and the FCT minister all, you know, just come out and show us what we need to know. And that would be amazing. All right, moving over to another top trending story. Well, this one talks about airstrikes um, killing terrorists in Niger, Bernou, and that is by the Nigerian Air Force. So according to NAF, the terrorists were seen assembly um, probably for a meeting when they were neutralized. NAF spokesman Edward Gabquet in a statement on Sunday said his sergeants were neutralized on May 3rd, 2024 at Chinene, a location tucked inside the Mandara mountain area near Borneo State. Within the same location, seven gun trucks were also observed packed under the trees. Accordingly, air interdiction was authorized and conducted over the assembly area and tree coverings to decimate the terrorists and destroy their weapons and mobility. 
after the strike battle damage assessment footages feedback received later revealed that the strikes were successful as several terrorists were neutralized and logistics destroyed the statement partly read Furthermore, NAF said terrorists hibernating in Alawa village near Shiroro in Niger state were neutralized the same day. Gabkwet said the mission was conducted following credible intelligence which had revealed the migration of terrorists into the village after the mass exit of locals for fear of their safety. This, um, to me, is definitely um, something that we'll definitely want to hear because we want everybody to be safe. And you're seeing locals actually fleeing from their villages because they don't feel safe. So uh, I'm not one for um, killing. I, I feel like, you know, they can be arrested. They can be sent to jail. But sometimes your hand, you know, is forced. And I'm sure the Nigerian government and the Nigerian Air Force are doing their best um, to ensure that the lives and properties of Nigerians are, are you know, safe, are protected. And so if this was um, uh, the only way to, to do that, then I'm sure that's, that's the reason why. So I hope that, you know, they continue on this um, eradication of terrorists, you know, just filtering our system, filtering um, our lands and ensuring that everyone is a good citizen to another. No one is coming and, you know, trying to kidnap, terrorize, um, harass other people. And, you know, everyone should be able to feel safe in their own locality. It shouldn't just be about the urban cities that you feel safe there. Even in your little village, you should be able to feel safe, not thinking that some terrorists are just going to come there and harm you. So um, kudos to the Nigerian Air Force, kudos to the Nigerian government, kudos to all of our security agencies who are doing their best to ensure that the lives and properties of Nigerians are, you know, safe and protected. We expect you to do more as usual, um, but well done. It is commendable that you're trying to protect us, but please, we just want you to do more. So we're not hearing cases of kidnapping um, on, the, on the rise all the time. All right, to our final top trending story, this one talks about local production to address high cost of drugs, and that is by the NAVDAG Director General. The Director General, National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, Professor Mojisola Adeyeye, has stated the agency's commitment to improving the local production of drugs in the country. This, she said, would help address the high cost of drugs nationwide. Adeyeye stated this as a webinar lecture organized by The Cable um, to celebrate their anniversary with the theme, Addressing Cost of Medicines. She said that locally manufactured medicinal products would be more accessible and affordable compared to the imported drugs. While the rejuvenation of the local pharmaceutical industry will become a panacea for the high cost of medicines in the country, the statement partly read. The NAVDAQ boss blamed the devaluation of the Naira as a significant factor for the high cost of local production as the high exchange rates had made procurement of raw materials and equipment imported for production extremely high. Adeye lauded the 5 plus 5 regulatory scheme, which she said has improved the availability and accessibility of drugs. In quotes, to encourage the local pharmaceutical industry to grow, well, Professor Adeyeye reiterated that the NAVDAC under her leadership started the 5 plus 5 regulatory scheme where a company that has been importing drugs that the local pharmaceutical industry is able to produce will get at least a five-year renewal. During the five-year renewal period, the importer must migrate to local manufacturing or partner with a local manufacturer. Which is great news because, I mean, we've always said you need to buy Ninja to grow the Naira. So if we can produce this, man, you know, locally, why not? So why can't we, um, you know, promote our local industries? 
Now, I know a lot of people can be wary and say, how sure are we that, you know, um, these this drugs are good, these drugs, they meet up to the standard. Um, but, I mean, that's where NAFDAQ comes in, and we just hope that they keep doing their jobs and ensuring that all of the drugs, food, whatever it is that is under their purview is made with quality products, is made with quality materials to ensure that whatever we're ingesting into our system, you know, is good for our bodies and not something that would harm our bodies. So um, definitely let's, let's try to, um, you know, just promote the local manufacturers. And I love the 5 plus 5 initiative, which kind of give, um, you know, some time for the person or for the company who is important to, to move over to the, the local manufacturers. So it's not like we're just coming at you and saying, no, you have to patronize them now. It's just giving you some time for a transition period, which is great. But like I said, um, let's just try to promote the local manufacturers. And I'm sure, obviously, because we're not important, because if you look at the FX rates um, for everything that we have to buy or everything that we have to import, that means we have to get you know, the, the currency in this case, one currency that we use a lot is the dollar. So, and we know how high the dollar has gone to, you know, in recent times. So, if we are, you know, promoting the local manufacturers, we're making more money for ourselves. We have more revenue. And why can't we start producing and sending, you know, to other countries as well, exporting? That way we're making more revenue. So, uh, great job um, with the NAFTA, with what the NAFTA is doing with the 5 plus um, 5 regulatory schemes it is amazing and i hope you know everybody would just adhere to it and follow the rules you know sometimes nigerians can you know they just like to cut corners but please we expect everybody to just do what is right and what is needful and try to grow our economy together all right that's it for our top trending stories we'll go on a short break look at the weather and when we return we'll be having the paper review please stay with us